Hey, what's up guys? It's Jack Lyon here today with another Max tutorial. And today I just wanted to show you guys a little bug fix that I was um, working on last night. Somebody uh, pointed out to me that whenever you move the device, well actually for this device, they said whenever this one gets moved, the mapping breaks. And that was true. And that's because of a flaw that was in the basic mapper we've been using. So I just wanted to cover a few of the um, few of the mistakes that I made and how I fixed those so that we can all have a working mapping button moving forward. I believe this version should be pretty robust. So um, if anyone has any suggestions or any more feedback, feel free to let me know as always. But I want to get into this and show you guys how it's done. So right now what we have is our basic mapper out and we're gonna dive into this sub patcher as well as our p map okay so first let's look at what's going on in here okay so right now what we have is this system here and what this is doing is whenever the device is loaded or moved it's going to look at its path and look at its place in the track and it's going to say well, am I in the same place as I just was or not? Um, so a good user on the forum, Disco Patrick, posted this a few years ago. Actually, like nine years ago. So you can go take the patch from there, look at it. He has an explanation on how it works in there. It's pretty clever. Um, I just want to give credit where credit's due there. So thank you, Disco Patrick. All right, so as you can see here, he has provided a little explanation. So if you're interested in how it works, go take a look at that. Um, and yeah, so I got found this very useful to solve the issue that I had, where basically whenever this device would be moved around, the mapping would break. So if I were to move this into the rack, out of the rack, over next to here, then this would no longer be mapped to the parameter it's mapped to. So the way I fixed that was I took his patch um, and turned into a little sub patcher just to keep things clean. I kept the ZL compare outside of the patch because um, there's a glitch I think I was experiencing where I, when I was saving the patch, it wouldn't work still. So I might have um, I might have done some things that I didn't need to do. Like I think that maybe this could work inside all inside the sub patcher, but this is how I got it to work, and it works fine for me. So. If you just copy this as it is, then there should be no problem. Feel free to experiment and let me know what you find with the results. So basically what we're gonna do is take this network here, and as you can see, we have this first inlet hooked up to the select object, and this these two outlets from the live dot path are going out of the first and second outlet respectively, just to make sure. Oh, sorry, so the first outlet from live dot path is going outside the second outlet of the sub patcher and the second outlet is going out the first of the sub patcher all right and then this select zero is going to be connected all the way back up to the load band okay so if you copy this it should work fine and then you can close that uh, return here make sure you have this hooked up as such right outlet to the right inlet of zl compare left to left and then you can take the left outlet of ZL Compare and hook that back into the inlet of this P device position change that I've made. Um, and then I have this connected to a bang. I think trigger bang could work, but like I said, this is just how I had it set up and it works. So I have that hooked up to a defer low to delay the message. So now when we go into this P map, we see we have another inlet, inlet six. So inlet six is going to be connected to this defer low, right? Okay, so if we go back into PMAP, so all I really did was I took inlet six and I hooked it up to the left inlet of this message box, and then I took the right inlet, the cold inlet, and hooked it up to the patcher map. So this is where the ID of the parameter actually goes to. So we're going to have the patch basically store the parameter ID, and then upon realizing that it's been moved, it's going to bang that message back into the device parameter remote. Um, so that was the main thing. So you, you might notice too that I have this in a sub patcher now. So what you're gonna wanna do is, um, if you have the original patch that I went over in the tutorial where we just use the generic M4L 
dot API. Oh, sorry, it's yeah, device parameter remote. Yeah, so you can double click that, open it up. Basically, you can copy all of this and put it in a sub patcher. So you call it whatever you want. And then, you know, basically you're going to take it all, paste it in there. This is what mine looks like. And all I've added here was this append 30 and line 30 uh, in floating point two, as well, just because um, it's going to smooth the messages to make sure that if you're dialing um, like a parameter that's like volume related or a filter, like you'll avoid hearing clicks. It basically will smooth out the messaging so that there's no aliasing. So that helps a lot. Go ahead and hook that up there if you don't have that one. Um, other than that, the last thing I wanted to point out was in the first video, I had the live this device hooked up to the mapping button here. Uh, you can cut that connection because uh, we don't want that to actually remember anything. It doesn't have to remember anything. It's only going to um, serve to like turn it on or off when a patch is open and it might be kind of confusing. So we just don't need that connected there. Um, but other than that, that's all for this one. Now you can go ahead and hook this up into the other ones too. So I'm going to show you how I did that to avoid the trouble of having you do it. And so it goes like this. We don't need this anymore. I don't need to save that. Oh yeah. One more thing too. So you might notice that it doesn't work because, um, Oh, well, it works in this case, but there's a glitch sometimes where when I save the device, like I think if I were to save it, like let's say I move something like tiny, like this, this is like a glitch I'm about to show you. So let me just move that and save it. All right, let's see, let's see. Let's map it to something new and move it. So it breaks and that doesn't make sense because it didn't change anything. So all you have to do is um, after you saved it, just delete it and then, oops. Go find wherever you saved it. I think it's version 1.2. And when you reinstantiate it, it should work now. So let me move this and voila, it still works. Okay, so that's just a little glitch with Max for Live. I'm not sure if they're aware of that or not, but hopefully that doesn't stay like that. But just so you know, if, it, if you try this and it doesn't work, try reinstantiating it first. Okay, so I'm gonna try and knock this out. So the way we implemented this is similar. We simply just paste our patch here with this sub patcher and ZL compare, bang to furlough, and we create an inlet inside of our B patcher here. So this B patcher is gonna have this third inlet, and then we're gonna create another sub patcher, or sorry, another inlet in the deepest layer of the B patcher. So now we've created this um, new inlet. I think it's the fourth, yeah. So into this fourth inlet, we're going to hook this up into the PMAP, and the PMAP inside looks the same as it did with the mapping button, the basic mapping button. So we're basically just gonna do the same thing that we did, but we just have to snake this around through a couple of layers of B patchers. So not that different, but could be a little weird if you're not used to Max. Um, so I just wanna point that out. Same goes for this. It's just a little bit more uh, elaborate since there's like four of them. So let me show you what I mean. So I have this right here, uh, the sub patchers, you'll compare, blah, blah, blah. And so I have that going into this B patcher. As you can see, we have all the inlets here. Um, I simply have this final inlet snaking that signal into this final B patcher, which contains our P maps. So go inside of each of these P maps and you can edit them as such with the message box. And then each of these uh, inlets is going to be hooked up to this one here, inlet eight. Okay, so this is what they look like. Um, now let's see, did I get this wrong? I did. So I have to move this back and put that in the here. Right, so these, just to reiterate, these last inlets here, they should definitely go inside, or they should definitely come from inlet eight, okay? So now everything should be working proper. Remember to reinstantiate your devices if you're doing this yourself. 
and you should have nice clean working mapping buttons that do not break all right so i hope that this video was useful i hope that this helped clear the air if anybody else was experiencing these problems uh, without further ado i'm going to end the video and i hope you guys have a good day bye bye